turn one soul ring. Let's get to the show. I think you know who we are, but uh, let's say it anyways. I'm Kevin. And I'm Eric. And today on the show, we're going to be reviewing the new cards from a couple of the Commander 19 decks. We're going to be covering the Jeskai cards and the... Um, Saltai? Saltai, yeah. And we're also going to be talking about some of the more valuable reprints in each deck. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it kind of seems like the Saltai deck has the best reprints of any of the four decks, but there's still some some pretty good ones in the other decks, I think. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> So the first deck is, let me just find my place here. Well, we haven't had a chance to play these decks yet. And so, like I said, we're just going to be covering the new cards. And kind of like a spoiler. Yeah. You know, kind of. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. Even though they've already, you know, been spoiled, but just kind of our thoughts on these cards and, and you know, like a rough idea of how we think some of them might play. Mm-hmm. But we're also a part of a commander league where... Uh, each year we buy all four decks and we uh, each player gets one of the four decks and we play them against each other for a few months and we have a point system and we upgrade the decks in a balanced way and you know there's there's a winner and you know we have prizes and everything and, and that's all fun but once we sort of get a chance to do that the first time, I think we'll have a better idea of how to review these decks because we do play them once out of the box with no alterations. So play them, see how they work, kind of like what was good and what was not. And obviously, mm-hmm. like we may only get like one round in. Right. So we won't even be able to like play all the cards possibly, but yeah. and I think see this what year, happens. Yeah, and I think this year we're going to put a hard cap on that first game of 90 minutes just because... Last year. Last year it was a very long game. I think we probably mentioned that before. Over um, three hours. Yeah. And one of the stipulations with the first match that we play is you can use any one of the lieutenant commanders right out of the box. It's just with this this year, I think they've made the j- decks even more synergistic with the flagship commander. So I wouldn't recommend doing that until you've made some significant alterations. Yeah. But maybe, I, I think you could get away with it more with the Rakdos deck, but we'll be talking. Even, even I think one of the other um, ones for the... Jeskai? Jeskai work kind of nicely as well, so. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, um, let's get to the main commander of the Jeskai deck. So this deck is called Mystic Intelligence, and the main strategy with the flagship is commander it Mystic is... Mystic Intellect? Intellect. What did I say? Intelligence? Yeah. Oof. Not very intelligent. It's close, though. I think it's close. <laughs> <laughs> so this this deck is built around the flashback mechanic, and Savine, the chronoclasm, is the commander. He's two, a blue, a red, and a white Jess guy for a 2-2 human wizard. Prevent all damage that would be dealt to Savine, the chronoclasm. Whenever you cast your first instant or sorcery spell from your graveyard each turn, copy that spell. You may choose new targets for the copy. It's too bad this isn't black because Yogmoth's will. Oh, yes. (laughs) (laughs) But uh, uh, this card, I think out of all the commanders, I think I like this ability the most. Really? Yeah, Yeah. I don't know if I like the overall decks a lot, like this one the most. Right. But I think this ability is really cool. Yeah, for sure. And if you... um... Well, there's another card in this deck that allows you to um, copy the spell again. But yeah, anytime you can copy spells, reuse spells, especially in a singleton format like Commander, is, is very, very powerful. And the addition of not being able to deal with him using damage yeah. on board is very powerful. Just like so. an in, like extra spice on the card, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like you could you know you could put a Blasphemous Act into this deck, and you still have Savine on the battlefield after yeah. that. So board wipe, it's... you're fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was kind of surprised Blasphemous Act wasn't just in here, but. <sighs> yeah, yeah. Okay. I guess that would have been. Well, they could have thrown another value, I guess it was, value reprint in here. It was also like I think it was in one of the precons last year. So yeah, I think it was in the the one artifact I deck, the yeah. Sahili deck. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, yeah, just like being able to copy spells, and then if there's like a spell that lets you copy a spell, and you can like copy that spell, you get like multiple copies and stuff. Like it can just kind of like spiral and be like kind of ridiculous. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. And it's each turn. So yes. if you have a flashback card that's an instant, you can do that on another player's turn. Totally. Yeah. So very very powerful. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to the lieutenant commanders. The first one is a. Bl- I guess this. 
<laughs> it's yeah, it's in there. There's two for each deck. It's a blue, a red, and a white. So uh, Jeskai again for a one five wall. It has flying defender and uh, well, it's called Pramicon Sky Rampart. As Pramicon Sky Rampart enters the battlefield, choose left or right. Each player may attack only the nearest opponent in the chosen direction and planeswalker controlled by that opponent. So I don't know if I'm the only one that did this, but when I used to play like multiplayer tabletop magic with my brother and his friends, we would play in a way so that the, well, the, one of the rules was that you could only attack to your left and block to your right. So I'm very familiar with this kind of a kind of a mechanic. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that being said, I don't know how how good this is um, to build a deck around. It seems like a lot of fun. But. Yeah, I think this is definitely one of the ones that's going to be more of um, like if you're going to build this, you're going to want to be building like a walls deck where you can still attack high toughness creatures and stuff like that. Yeah, and if you're going to build a walls deck, why wouldn't you just build Arcades? Exactly. Like he's just overall better. Like mm-hmm. there's no point to running this instead of that. This is just better of like a in the ninety nine, I think. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I I don't know if this is a card that stays in the deck too terribly long. And it's kind of interesting for the Jeskai deck because it's like um, maybe they don't have as many creatures as like the other decks. And so they don't. Can, yeah, yeah, they actually don't. And so it's like depending on where you're sitting on the table, you can kind of like defend yourself a little bit because like yeah. for us, if we're out of the pre cons, like I would make it so that the token player wouldn't be able to attack me. For sure. Yeah. yeah. No, very good point. Yeah. So some defense for the Jeskai deck. Mm-hmm. All right, so the next Lieutenant Commander is Elsha of the Infinite. And yeah. This one seems like a lot of fun. It's two and Jeskai for three th- for a 3-3 three, three Jin Monk. It has prowess, and you may look at the top card of your library any time. You may cast the top card of your library if it's a non-creature, non-land card, and you may cast it as though it had flash. You can just give all your cards flash. This is ridiculous. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> like you, I think, I think out of all the Lieutenant Commanders, this is probably the most realistic one to play out of the box. Yeah. Um, as opposed to Savine. Yeah. This was the one I was thinking of when you were saying yeah. about the other ones. Yeah. This, is this just one's just like, like really good. It's, uh, yeah, it, it's, yeah, you can just do some crazy stuff with this card. Yeah. So. And, it, and it's like, it's nice that it also has like prowess and stuff too. Mm-hmm. Just yeah. a little extra bonus, but yeah, can get around certain board wipes too. You can cast things at instant speed, and yeah, it's 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 pretty awesome. But I, yeah, I being, like this card a lot. Yeah, <laughs> you can just have some like ridiculous sorcery spells if it's on the top of your deck. You can still play it. Oh yeah, someone else's turn, like for sure. Oh, board wipes. Yeah, instant speed board wipes. Oh yeah. yeah, those are always so good. Yeah, so this is pretty good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's kind of like torn between do you want like double spells or do you want to be able to like cast things with flash? Like oh. I think I want this. I think this is better. I I think this is better only because graveyard strategies are so easy to deal with, and unlike many other strategies, you deal with them so completely. Because if you have a yeah. line of the void. Graveyards are just gone. Gone. And everything that was in that graveyard, even if you get rid of that Leyline of the Void, all that stuff is still gone. Yeah. So just graveyard strategies, I think, can be so completely crippled. Whereas the top of your library is much more reliable. It's much harder to deal with. So, you know, unless somebody's going to do like a, you know, like a Kodak Shredder kind of thing you're That's not gonna not see a, that don't though play that don't play that in commander yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah i that so that's why i would run this commander over savine for if, sure if yeah. i was gonna if i was gonna go with this deck yeah <clears throat> but yeah just a very cool it's like what what more do you want out of the only thing i the only thing that's missing on this on this commander is green which would make it easier to ramp yeah <laughs> otherwise, <laughs> otherwise i think it's green in yeah there. otherwise i think it's perfect yeah <laughs> <clears throat> All right, let's move on to the rest of the new cards in the deck. <clears throat> this one, I think, is pretty spicy. Yeah, I think this one could see, like, CEDH play. It's Mandate of Peace, one and a white for an instant. Cast the spell only during combat. Your opponents can't cast spells this turn. End the combat phase. Remove all attackers and blockers from combat. Exile all spells and abilities from the stack, including this spell. So whatever's going on this turn during combat, you're just like, nope. Done. Yeah, yeah. this isn't a good turnout for what's happening. There's too much of a big swing coming at me or something like that. And you're mm-hmm. just like, negate it all. Whoever's turn it is. Sorry, you, That's can't, right. you yeah. can't do anything. Yeah, you can save another player from 
from death. Like you yep. can give yourself another turn. And, you know, we've had cards like Time Stop in the past, which is just end the turn. But that's six mana. Yeah. That's so this a lot for, more. This for two mana. <clears throat> yeah. I think it's a really good value for what the card does. Yeah, I think it's a really cool card. Yeah. They just, you know, it's like give it flashback. You know, would that oh, have yeah. been too Come much on. to ask? Yeah, that's in this deck. What are you... <laughs> <clears throat> ah, yes. Can you read these? Yeah, totally. I just mean like, I know you can read. Oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah. I just mean from that distance. Uh, so next up, we got Savine's Reclamation. Uh, two of anything and a white for a sorcery. Uh, return target permanent card with CMC cost three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. If this spell was cast from a graveyard, you may copy this spell and you may choose a new target for the copy. And so then it's flashback cost is four of anything and a white. So if you flash it back, you get to copy it twice. Yeah, and then if it's the first spell you right. cast this turn with a commander from the box, you get to target three things. Right. Uh, uh, wait, return target permanent card with converted math? I feel like we're playing magic. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, you can only you only get the copy if it's cast from your graveyard. But if it's the first spell, you get to copy it an additional time because of Savine's Yeah, so then you ability. get three total... Things right. back from the graveyard. Yeah, it's like um, it's like a Sun Titan on a s- not on a stick. Not on a stick. <laughs> it's a Sun Titan sun without the, the stick. stick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there's one of these spells for each of the commanders. respective commanders. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I think this one's pretty cool. Yeah, it's 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 awesome. There's a yeah. lot of tricky three cost permanents that you're gonna want to bring back from the graveyard. Oh, yeah. So this card in general is like, obviously, this deck is very based on graveyards. So if there's graveyard hate, it's going to suck a little bit for some of these cards. That's why the Dijin Monk might be the choice to go. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? I'm just, I have like a graveyard uh, PTSD because I've played a lot of graveyard decks and it's just, I know how crippling it can be. So don't, yeah. don't necessarily listen to me. It's all about your meta. <laughs> All right, the next card we have is Thalia's Geist Caller. It's two and a white for a 3-1 human cleric with lifelink. Whenever you cast a spell from your graveyard, create a 1-1 white spirit creature token with flying. Sacrifice a spirit. Thalia's Geist Caller gains indestructible until end of turn. So I don't really know what to make of this card because if it was sacrifice a spirit, target creature gains indestructible until end of turn. Sure. I, th- I think it would be good. Yeah. But, you know, it's I just... It's a 3-1. Yeah, I, I'm just not... I'm kind of underwhelmed by this card. Yeah. Maybe I'm missing like, something. No, I think, like, the main point of it is that you'll be casting... Like, if we take uh, other cards, for example, like Monastery Mentor or, like, Young Pyromancer and stuff, when your right. goal of the deck is to play spells and then, like, have that creature out to, like, get more copies of tokens, mm-hmm. uh, this card can protect itself from removal... To keep making those tokens for you. You know what? This would be good in like a Kaikar deck. That that creature that you could, whenever you cast a non-creature spell, I think it's also Jeskai. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you create a 1-1 one, one spirit oh, creature yeah. token, and then you can sacrifice the a, spirit, a spirit for a red for mana. Red. Yeah. That would, this would be awesome in that deck. Yeah. Or throw Kaikar in this deck. Yeah. That'd be good too. Yeah. That'd be a great way to ramp. Yeah. Wow. I wonder if Kaikar's in this deck. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> it's definitely not. <clears throat> oh, man. All right, so Mass Diminish is one of anything in a blue for a sorcery. Until your next turn, creatures target player controls have base power and toughness 1-1, one, one, and you can flash it back for three of anything in a blue. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's good. It's like almost a board wipe. Why isn't this instant? Yeah. <laughs> Or why like, isn't it like because it's it's not quite a polymorph effect because yeah. the creatures are only you're only affecting their power toughness yeah so you need an you need something else to to get rid of them right yeah. like you need you know like an Evan Carr's Justice or something like a minus minus spell to get rid of them yep but it's so. still like because there's other spells that kind of do this kind of stuff and they do have like instant speed yeah like well um, sudden spoiling. Yeah, Sudden Spoiling is awesome because it has split second. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's also and, instant, so it's like for the rest of the turn. And I think Polymorphous Jest is also instant speed, and it turns them into 1-1 one, one frogs, and they lose all abilities. Yeah. So that's another good one. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, just kind of like, it's uh, this one's almost there. Yeah. Almost like, there. I think, I think this card really needs to be an instant. It being a sorcery just really makes it, like, 
I would take this card out. Like, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's not really, it's not a combat trick, which is kind of what it Those seems cards, like they were going for. Yeah. Cause then it's like, if you're being attacked by somebody, you can be like, bam, I take now five damage instead of like 40 or right, something. Or I'm going right? to block like, all your one ones. Yeah. And, and there goes your board. Exactly. Yeah. So, but this way, this is like, this card's made for like the, um, the Naya deck. Mm-hmm. Cause you have a bunch of creatures, you make someone else's creature small and you get to attack in. What is this card doing in this deck? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. The next card is Wall of Stolen Identity. It's three and a blue for a zero zero shapeshifter wall. You may have Wall of Stolen Identity enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield, except it's a wall in addition to its other types and has Defender. When you do, tap the copied creature and it doesn't untap during its controller's untap step for as long as you control Wall of Stolen Identity. Like, um, it's like Vidal can shackles, right? Yeah. Like, as long as you keep that tapped. Yeah. Um, and you have the required amount of islands. So, yeah, this is like a cool tap, you know, hit a creature that has a tap ability. Yeah. Or get like... its, get its, well, I guess, uh, in, in you can use that ability. So that's kind of cool. Oh, yeah. I guess while Sun Identity gets the, uh, the yeah, it becomes a copy yeah. of the creature. So that's interesting. So yeah, if there's like something you want to like turn off for somebody, not only are you turning that off, you get that ability now. Mm-hmm. I think this is kind of an interesting card. Yeah, I could. Yeah. And again, like I could see putting this into my Arcades mm-hmm. EDH deck. It's yeah, just like kind of a cool remo- removal spell. And you're tapping down their creature. So in that scenario, you're tapping down a creature that could block all of your walls. So yeah, it's or if it's idea. just like their commander, you know, is like doing something for them. You can just get them out of there. Obviously, like, whatever abilities the commander has just from being on the battlefield, those are still there. Any static abilities. Any yeah. static abilities, of course. yeah. yeah. Can't do anything about that. Nope. Yeah, when are they going to print an orb that's, like, static abilities don't do anything? <laughs> that's All right. what static orb should have been. Well, yes. What static mm-hmm. orbs, like, you'd only untap two permanents? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I like, I like those orb cards, but... Um, People don't like you. No. <laughs> so I, so I, st- I stopped playing them. <laughs> All right. Next up, we have the Backdraft Hellkite. So it's three of anything and two red for a 4-4 four, four flyer. Uh, whenever Backdraft Hellkite attacks each instant and sorcery card in your graveyard, gains flashback until end of turn. The flashback cost is equal to its mana cost. So Past and Flames on a stick. Yeah. Very good. And every t- every t- every combat you're getting Past and Flames mm-hmm. on a stick. So if you have enough mana... You can just cast everything in your graveyard. And it's not that difficult to get infinite mana with blue. No, it's not. Blue and artifacts. Yeah, so. <clears throat> I think this card's really good. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Yeah. Like, obviously, it has, it does have the downside compared to who Pass in Flames, where it's like, you play this, someone just removes it before you get the ability, obviously. But yeah. Be- being able to give it haste would be oh, I- yeah. ideal. Yeah, it's got a Lightning Greaves out there. But yeah, but you already did pay five. So how much mana do you have left? What's great about Pass and Flames is it also has flashback. Mm-hmm. So yeah, <clears throat> yeah. But I, you know, I still like this card. I probably wouldn't take this one out right away. I think this. I think I would keep this one in mm-hmm. if you're going to be going for like a spell slinger style. Yeah. Okay. The next card is Ooh. Dockside Extortionist. It's one in a red for a one-two Goblin Pirate. When Dar- Dockside Extortionist enters the battlefield, create X treasure tokens, where X is the number of artifacts and enchantments your opponents control. This card is great. This is such a good card. You know, like red has trouble ramping, and artifacts and enchantments are. You know, very, very common on the battlefield. They're some of the most powerful cards in Commander. Especially artifacts. Especially artifacts. Everyone's ramping with artifacts. Absolutely. If they're not in green, they have to. Yeah. You play this, you're going to get like 10 mana. Absolutely. (laughs) So, yeah, it's very... It's. I think it's a good card in this deck. I think it's a good card in a lot of other decks. Like if you have... Yeah, like I'm definitely gonna put this in my Duretti deck. Oh yeah, just to ramp that way, and then I can use the to- the treasure tokens to sacrifice to get stuff back from my graveyard. Uh, yeah, this is just like a super. I I really like this card a lot. Yeah, I think even if you're just like in red, like I would even like look at this card to maybe pick up because it's just a great ramp card. It's a it's a fantastic ramp card. Like mm-hmm. it's just gonna get you there. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Super cool. Hmm. Ooh. Let's ignite the future. So three of anything in a red for a sorcery. Exile the top three cards of your library. Until the end of your next turn, uh, you may play those cards. If this spell was cast from a graveyard, 
you may play those cards this turn without paying their mana costs. Right. Oh, it has flashback. Yeah, it's, it's seven and a <laughs> red for, for flashback. <laughs> so with Savine's static ability, you could do this twice. Yes. Uh, which so is... you look at the top. Like, if you flashback this, the top six cards, you get to cast them for free. That's nuts. Oh, that's so good. It's <laughs> this so ca- good. <laughs> yeah, this card is really, really good. Um, and then if you have ways of, like... So it's, it is eight mana to flashback, which is a lot. Um, but, I mean, if you have, like, you know, Sensei's Divining Top, yeah, or like other yeah. ways of, like, manipulating the top like of your deck. scroll rack and putting your hand yeah. on top of your library, you could really get some crazy stuff going. Yeah. <clears throat> some game-winning stuff. Heck, yeah. Okay, this is... Uh, this is Gerard Weatherlight Hero. He's, oh, we've, he's a commander. Yeah, but he's not a lieutenant commander because mm. they got to be in the colors. Right. Yeah. Good point. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> Continue he, on. <laughs> he's two, a red and a white for a 3-3 three, three human soldier. He has first strike. When Gerard Weatherlight Hero dies, exile it and return to the battlefield all artifact and creature cards in your graveyard that were put there from the battlefield this turn. So... You could get some kind of crazy stuff going with this card because, you know, unlike other commanders that have the dies clause that we've seen in the past, he will die and then get exiled. Yeah. So you're still going to get that trigger even if af- when, when the exile trigger happens, you send him to the command zone because he's already died. So you're still going to get all your artifacts and creature cards from the graveyard to the battlefield. I think Boros just got a good commander. Yeah. With this yeah. printing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you could definitely do like an eggs kind of thing. Totally. Mm-hmm. But then also just going kind of like big and just having like board wipes. Because if you have your commander out there, you can just keep building your board. You board wipe, put everyone else down, but then you still have your board. Yeah, but you know, that like that that is a strategy, but you know, you also have to deal with commander tax every time you want to bring Gerard yeah. back. Yeah. Which could be, you know, not necessarily backbreaking, but you're you are in Boros, so if you're you know, but you're board wiping, so all the artifacts that you're ramping with are gonna come back and everyone else is gonna be sad. Yeah, that could be cool. Yeah. I could definitely see that happening. But I do yeah, I do like that they're that they're designing cards, you know, that it it dies, but it's still it, you can still it's still viable as a commander because it exiles after it dies. So they're giving that clause so that you can still abuse it in the command zone, but it's not completely broken. Mm-hmm. All right, empowered auto generator. That's four of anything for an artifact. Uh, it enters the battlefield tapped, and then you tap it. Put a charge counter on the auto generator. Add X mana of any one color, where X is the number of charge counters on Empowered Auto Generator. Yeah, so this is just a... I don't like this card. It's a four-mana ramp card. Yeah, it's, it's not. I don't like those. No. At least, Especially for, like, how slow this one is, too. At least with Sky Shroud Claim, you get the forests untapped. Yeah. So I don't really... I don't like this card. Also, either. for, like, <laughs> one more mana, uh, we have Gilded Lotus, which taps for three mana right away yeah right Co- away co- yeah colored mana yeah uh yeah i don't i don't like this card because then because so you you play this on turn four turn five it nets you one mana turn six you get two mana from it yeah what point is it worth turns, it, you like right? what yeah yeah magic unlike physics has no unbreakable laws no oh. well this card definitely I, yeah i don't think it's breakable no. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually like, I think this card's really bad. It's bad, yeah. And I it's don't. a rare. Unless you have a way to, it's just that it enters the battlefield tapped. I know, it enters Ugh. the battlefield tapped. That's like, like if it Such entered garbage. untapped, <laughs> yeah. it's so much better. Yeah, I, yeah, it's just terrible. Let's just move on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this next card is, is going to make up for that. It's Cliffside Rescuer. This card is, is very interesting. It's a 2 2 core soldier. It costs one and a white, and it has Vigilance. You can tap it, sacrifice, Cliffside Rescuer, target permanent you control, gets protection from each opponent until end of turn. That's pretty powerful. That's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So obviously, like, it's just like a one-shot thing. Um, so depending on, like, what you want to use it for. Like, if you have something going on with uh, one of your creatures to get in, like, that last hit on somebody. Uh, if you're playing, like, a Voltron strategy... You can just get in there no matter what. Oh, yeah, I was thinking that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 
Yeah, and this is in two of the decks. I believe this is also in the Naya deck. Cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can use the protection. You can use it as a way to get through. Yeah, this um, should be a rare, and they should make empowered auto generator. Yeah. Just get Switch rid of it. No, just get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't print that card. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, put a better reprint in its place. Put yeah. a Gilded Lotus in the deck yeah, instead. Yeah, like, <laughs> come on. And that card's not that valuable. It was just reprinted in it Dominaria just like reprinted. two years ago. It's a better card. <laughs> <laughs> if you pick up this deck, take the auto generator out there, put a Gilded Lotus in, do a favor. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, but yeah, the, the Cliffside Rescue, I think, is a pretty neat card. It's really cool, yeah. We, we don't see a lot of cards where you just get protection from... From a... Players. Yeah, players, yeah, players, yeah. Yeah, it's like, um, is it true, true, name. true name? Yeah, true name nemesis. Yeah, you get protection from target player. Uh, yeah, that card does. Right. Yeah, that's very, and that that card is quite valuable for a long time. I think it still is. Yeah, it still is, but it got a hit when it was reprinted in Battle Bond. I think Battle Bond or Masters Twenty Five. I'm sure it's. I'm sure Riley will correct me in the Instagram comments. Cool. He, he's good like that. And I, I appreciate it, Riley. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not surly about it at all. Yeah, because that card was getting up there just because of, like, vintage. Right. And legacy, yeah, that's where it's legacy. on play. Yeah. 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 Uh-huh. That's right. Hey, Leadership Vacuum is the next one. So it's two vanilla and a blue for an instant. Target player returns each commander they control from the battlefield to the command zone. Draw a card. I like that it replaces itself and that it's an instant. I think, I, I really like this card. Yeah. It's and, great. <laughs> and if you're, you know, like you, you do play against decks sometimes where they take your commander, right? That's a very powerful effect. So if you can just bounce it back to your hand, that's awesome. Yeah. <clears throat> but then it's also like if someone's just running like a Voltron strategy and just like you can interact with their stuff no matter what, this gets around it because it targets the player and they have to put their commander back. Yeah. But you could also just like eerie interlude your commander mm-hmm. Right and blink it, or you could uh, cloud shift it. Right, like you yeah. Can, but if they do, do stuff, stuff like, like that, that, then like all the uh, auras on it are just gone. Flicker, you can flicker form it, and all okay. the auras and equipments go with it. Okay, so, so very. One card. So you gotta be in white. Sure. <laughs> so <laughs> one card. Yeah. Sorry, I'm all about the corner cases. Uh, but yeah, I think this card is really good. Um, and this is also in the. It's also. I wish it was each player. Or each opponent. Yeah, that would each be... Each opponent? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That'd be super good. I think that'd be too powerful, though. It'd have to be like a five mana card or something. Yeah, that'd be very good. It's Yeah, it's also in the Sultai deck, so... Cool. We, this is, we're not going to talk about this again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <clears throat> okay, so the next card is Bloodthirsty Blade. It's two colorless for an artifact equipment. Equipped creature gets plus two plus zero and is goaded. So for those of you that don't know what Goaded is, I certainly don't remember. It attacks each combat if able and attacks a player other than you if able. You can pay one, attach Bloodthirsty Blade to target creature and opponent controls. Activate this ability only anytime you could cast a sorcery. Cool. I like this card a lot. Yeah. I think it's really cool. Um, there's just like a lot of politicking you can do with it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. and it's just like the best creature you see on the battlefield you can make it start attacking your other opponents because it can't attack you yeah this would be good in my Zancha deck oh yeah yeah, yeah. This is, and I think this is also in one of the, uh, another one of the decks it okay. might be the Rakdos deck cool mm-hmm. we'll, we'll get there we'll get there yeah yeah but yeah um, really good for politicking and stuff and like it just it gets that like damage in because like uh, as uh, if you ramp like turn two, you can have like someone's creature attacking if they've already played a creature out, mm-hmm. which is yeah. really neat. Definitely, yeah, yeah. Like, and I think that is Gerard in the art. Oh, cool. I think might not be. It could just be somebody. The flavor text is uh, ambiguous about it. So, but I'm pretty sure it's him. All right, I'll I'll take your word for it. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> All right, so Scare Tiller. Um, I think this is in every deck. It is in every deck, yeah. Yeah. It's the one card in every deck besides... Yeah, it's the one card in every deck. Yeah. Besides Soul Ring. Sure, and yeah. Command and Tower. Right. Yeah. But anyways. So it's one of three <laughs> cards that's in every deck. This is the new card that's in every deck. <laughs> <laughs> Never before seen. <laughs> All right, so it's four of anything, uh, and it's a Scarecrow. Uh, whenever Scare Tiller becomes tapped, choose one. You may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield tapped, or return target land card from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. That's cool. Yeah, something about these decks, they put a lot more 
lands into them than they have in previous years. Like the the Sulta and the Jeskai deck both have forty lands, and oh, the other two have... decks have close to forty lands, like very high thirties. And uh, which is funny because we were planning on doing an episode, which we still will, about lands. Mm-hmm. And um, that's sort of s- something that I've done more as the years have gone on is just like if I'm building a deck, I start with 37 lands and I either work my way up, up or, or down. down in you know either direction. It's usually up. But yeah, it's sort of interesting that they're putting so many lands into decks that aren't land-centric. Yeah. So... I guess, you know, maybe they've... Because I think, like, if you... Like, we usually have um, artifact ramp and stuff. So usually when you have those in the deck, I think 40 lands is a little high. Yeah, but, maybe. Um, yeah, you, more chance of getting flooded. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Um, but, like, with morph, with a morph strategy, like, if you don't draw a Seedborn Muse, like, you have to be hitting your land drops. You have to be ramping because morph costs are so high. Mm-hmm. And... With this flashback deck, oh, you want a lot. Of you mana want a lot of mana because you're he, flashbacking and casting spells again. Exactly in the same turn sometimes. Yeah, so it, it kind of makes sense. But yeah, this is yeah. a cool card, and you can even throw this in some of your lands decks. Oh right? yeah, like this is a great card. Yeah, because if you have a way of just tapping it, you just get lands back. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, because like if you attack at somebody and they have a blocker, that's your one problem. So. All right, well, let's move on to the value reprints, as I like to call them, mm. for this deck. All right. The first one up is Sun Titan. Sun Titan is four and two white for a 6-6 six, six giant with a vigilance. Whenever Sun Titan enters the battlefield or attacks, you may return target permanent card with converted mana cost three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. So this card is just great. All, all the Titans are pretty good. Yeah. But this one is is one of the better ones. It's actually one of my favorite cards. Yeah, it's um, just so much value. Yeah, like when I first even just started playing like Constructed, I made a deck with like Sun Titans in them because just like a, a good card. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It brings back any permanent from your graveyard. Like mm-hmm. why not? Yeah, it's yeah, really <laughs> good. And this card was, I don't know, it was, I think it was in like the five, six dollar range. So it, it was, yeah, around there. I think this is a good reprint and it'll probably go back to that as well. So, yeah, good uh, good reprint. The next one is Clever Impersonator. It's two and two blue for a zero zero shapeshifter. You may have Clever Impersonator enter the battlefield as a copy of any non-land permanent on the battlefield. I was really surprised they reprinted this because this was also getting up there. This is a mythic from... Cons. Like, con. So a yeah. set that was opened a lot because we yeah. had the fetch lands. But still, a very... A, just a great card because it targets any non-land permanent on the battlefield. This can be anything you want. Yep. Yeah, I think this card's great. Um, this is kind of like their top end, I think, reprint. I guess it's this and Sun Titan that are kind of tied in this deck, I think. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. but yeah, if like someone has a really good, like even like Planeswalker out there, you can just like take that. Um, you don't take it, but like you get that as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, well, if it's Gar- if it's Garrick Apex Predator, then you can t- turn it into Garrick Apex Predator and then destroy the other Garrick Apex Predator. Oh, with like look the at minus that. whatever. Yeah, I can't remember how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> Never the seen that card tech. in play. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I put it in my commander deck, our my league deck last year. Never saw it. <laughs> <laughs> Because everyone had Planeswalker Commanders. Yeah. yeah. Except Riley. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, nope, not doing it. <laughs> Took Soul Ring out too. You know what? He's got to walk his own path. Yeah. <laughs> you, you get a point for playing Soul Ring. He's like, no. No, I don't want it. No. <laughs> you got a point for playing Soul Ring last. Yes. <laughs> but it's still like you're in the running for the point. But if you take that card out of your deck, you, that's like a whole point you're just like never going to get. Ever. We should do a point for being Riley. <laughs> <laughs> uh. All right. I hope he's not listening to this. <laughs> Okay, the next reprint is Ghostly Prison. It's two and a white for an enchantment. Creatures can't attack you unless their controller pays two for each creature he or she controls that's attacking you. So this is like, you know, a propaganda effect. Yeah. Um, Actually, I didn't even know this card was like getting up there because it was also around like... It was also around six, seven bucks. Yeah. Yeah, it was getting up there for sure. Yeah. Um, there's a pretty nice... Uh, and the original <clears throat> Kamigawa foil with different art is also quite pricey. I think it's oh, like around 35 bucks or yeah. something. Yeah. But um, 
There's also a... Uh, oh, because that's the one that has the, like, towers. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it actually more... It looks more like a prison. Yeah, I like that one. This guy's just, like, a cat guy. Behind with, swords? With swords? Yeah, I don't... I don't yeah. know. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Ooh, uh, Ash Barons. This is just a common. And I think Ash Barons is in every deck. This is a really yes. nice touch. I really feel like, you know, like we said, the reprints aren't crazy this year, but I think they did a pretty good job. Yeah, I think I think they really, like, heard uh, people's complaints about the reprint situation from the last set. Yeah. Um, and then we are seeing better reprints this set for sure. Mm -hmm. um, so I do like seeing these kinds of cards. Even if they're just, like, the commons and the uncommons that, you know, are, like, five or six bucks. Because they've only been printed, like, in a supplemental set like this. Yeah. You know. This and, like, Masters 25, that's the only time Ash Parents has been printed. Yeah. And it's, like, Soul Ring, right? Like, Soul Ring is not on these or this reprint list but it could be because like that card dips down a couple of bucks every year when the commander set gets released but it always goes back up to like four or five six bucks always yeah. yeah so anyways yeah ash barons is a land you can tap it for a colorless and it has basic land cycling one so you pitch this card you search your library for a basic land card reveal it put it into your hand then shuffle your library so it's just a it's just kind of like a better you know terramorphic expanse or evolving wilds yeah yeah because well, sort of. It's yeah, because you you still have to pay one to do it to get the land. Yeah, but if you need a if you just need a generic mana on your turn, it's better to have this than a, oh, yeah, one of the saying. fetch lands because yeah. you know they you it comes into and... play the basic comes into play tapped. But yeah, it's sort of a toss up. It's situational. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> And the last one in this deck that we're going to talk about is Ral Zarek. So each one of these decks has a Planeswalker, which uh, I thought was a nice touch, but then I realized they did that last year. <laughs> <With the> commanders. <laughs> um, so this one is, uh, it's a, he's a Planeswalker, Planeswalker dash Ral. <laughs> uh, he's, he's two, a blue and a red for a four loyalty Planeswalker. His plus one is tap target permanent, then untap another target permanent. His minus two is Ral Zarek deals three damage to target creature or player. I wonder, well, this, because this is an old, this is the artwork from Gatecrash, I think, or yeah. whatever set that is. So I wonder if they've uh, errated it to be any target, because they've done that with a lot of cards. Oh, yeah. In the last couple of years. Anyways, his minus seven is flip five coins, take an extra turn after this one for each coin that comes up heads. Never seen that. <laughs> <laughs> like you've never seen someone use that? Yeah. I don't yeah. even think I've ever seen someone actually play with this commander or this uh, planeswalker in commander. Uh, Rob did, our friend that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He had this card and he got to use the ultimate once. Nice. Super excited about congratulations. it. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A belated congratulations. Sure, yeah. Yeah, sorry I missed that. But yeah, the, the tap untap ability can be very powerful. Uh, even just for ramping, you could tap down your scare your uh, scare tiller, drop a land, return a land from your graveyard. That's actually some good synergy there. Yeah, because you usually use the tap ability against someone else's thing or something. Right, right. Yeah. So. But uh, yeah, and then even like the minus two, you can like some little thing that's generating value. You can just wipe it off the board. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This card's got decent value to it. Definitely. Yeah. Um, there is actually one more. Oh, yeah, you got a couple more. Yeah. Um, the other, like, a uh, pretty decent reprint from this one was the uh, River Kelpie. Um, so it's three of anything and two blue uh, for a 3-3 three, three beast. Uh, whenever River Kelpie or another permanent enters the battlefield from a graveyard, draw a card. Uh, whenever a player casts a spell from a graveyard, draw a card. And then it also has Persist. Mm. So when it dies, it comes back with a minus one counter on it. Right. So. If it didn't have a minus one, minus one counter? Correct, right? yes. Yeah. yeah. So uh, th this card also was just like i think it was around like the five dollar mark yeah surprisingly mm -hmm. and then um it works really well in this deck too because you're casting spells at a grave right you get to draw cards for that yeah i don't know that is good yeah so it's actually a really good card yeah mm -hmm. yeah i like that a lot. yeah and i think that's from like the laurel and shadow more block which is probably why it's a little more pricey yeah under printed set yeah <clears throat> okay well is that uh is that all we have for this uh all right, well, then we're going to move on to the Sultai deck. And this deck is called Faceless Intelligence. No, I'm kidding. It's Faceless Menace. That was a, <laughs> that was a callback. And the main strategy of this deck is the morph mechanic. 
uh, is using the morph mechanic, but it also uses the manifest mechanic because the flagship commander is cr- concerned with face down cards. So the flagship commander of this deck is Kadena Slinking Sorcerer. She is one, a black, a green, and a blue, Sultai, for a 3-3 Naga Wizard. So, you know, all you Naga tribal fans, this is the commander. Here we go. The first face-down creature spell you cast each turn costs three less to cast, and whenever a face-down creature enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. So with Morph, you're basically getting, without any tax effects, you're getting a free creature every turn. Yeah. If you have a, you know, if you have a Morph card. And you know you draw, and that replaces itself because you draw a card off of that. But any manifest effect as well, you're going to draw cards off of that if they're coming to play under your control. Which I didn't really think about when this was spoiled. I didn't really think about manifest. Yeah, me either. <clears throat> um, so that's just like a lot of like really good value, mm-hmm. um, which is like what Saltai is all about. Oh yeah, it's just like value. Yeah, it's just playing stuff, drawing Val- cards. You just like keep Val- going through. Yeah, value and really great removal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, this, this, uh, definitely screams the colors that it, uh, insult I, mm-hmm. yeah. The only constant in life is the unknown. That's right. The only, um, yeah, it's, it's change. Yeah. It's change folks. All right. Let's move on to the Lieutenant commanders. The first one is Rayami first of the fallen. Uh, he is one. And Sultai for a 5-4, so good rate. Mm. Vampire, if a non-token creature would die, exile that card with a blood counter on it instead. Oh. As long as I just like read that poorly. As long as an exiled creature card with a blood counter on it has flying, Rayami, first of the fallen, has flying. The same is true for first strike, double strike, death touch, haste, hexproof, indestructible, lifelink, menace, protection, reach, trample, and vigilance. Mm. So this could be like a cool Voltron commander, maybe. It could be. So the other thing is that like I think this is like the first green vampire in mm. Magic. Nice. Because they're usually have there been, been blue vampires also. I don't think so. So it's the first blue and green. Oh yeah, it's blue. Yeah. There might. Yeah, I'm not sure. Mm, yeah. I think there might have been because. Like in one of the Innistrad sets. Maybe? Yeah, that's maybe. what I was thinking. I don't know. I feel like I, I would remember like that. Green has never had a vampire. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'd yeah. I'd probably agree with that without doing any of without doing any independent research. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, and like that's like uh, any creature on the battlefield too. So that's your opponents as well. Yeah, that no, it is a good it is a good way to permanently get rid of creatures. Mm-hmm. Like that's that's like. Um, and offense of the foremost did that affected creatures that way, where if they would die, they would be exiled instead. So, and then this also says like exile with a blood counter on it, um, and so like those stay like that. So if like Rayami dies, when you cast it again, those cards are still exiled with the blood counters on them. So yeah. then they still have all those abilities. Mm-hmm. So just yeah. like over the course of the game, Rayami is just getting stronger. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, that that is a lot of evasive abilities. Yeah, yeah, I'm not really sure. Definitely don't play this one out of the box, but this could be, you know, I feel like we'll see this in some form in the next few months. Like, it, it would be really interesting to build around. I think, like, depending on, like, your matchup with, like, the people you're playing, you could get lucky and just, like, be really good. But then in other matchups, you might just, like, have nothing, like, no creatures to exile that have good abilities, right? Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, and you have to have a way to reliably kill creatures, right? Because you have to get them to die first. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's um, not really sure about this one. Might be. Uh, I don't think it's quite like a Thantis, the War Weaver from last year, but I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> also, something really interesting is that like, if an non-token creature would die, exile that card. So it's like, Rayami can get indestructible, but that must be a really roundabout way to try and give him indestructible because you got to like remove that from the creature itself to kill it. Well, you could do like a minus one minus one on an indestructible creature, right? A, a, a yeah. minus minus effect. That's true. Yeah. yeah. All right. Cool. That I mean, that's, that's how we deal with, <laughs> with indestructible, right? Derp. <laughs> it's like indestructible <laughs> can't be destroyed. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> All right. So the second lieutenant for the Sultai deck is Volrath, the Shape Stealer. 
Nice to see Volrath getting another incarnation in in a card. Yeah, I like this art. He's two and a Sultai. Yeah, the art is like um, it's it's got like the brain. Yeah, and the whole like body cavity is open, and you know he's doing something gross. He's just doing something. Yeah, yeah. He's a seven five shapeshifter. Good rate. At the beginning of combat on your turn, put a minus one minus one counter on up to one target creature. Pay one until your next turn. Volrath, the shape stealer, becomes a copy of target creature with a counter on it, except it's a seven five and it has this ability. So it just has to be a creature with a counter on it. It doesn't have to be the minus one minus one counter from Volrath. So if you're putting plus one plus one counters on your creatures just from your deck, you can make Volrath become a copy of those creatures. Yeah. And so. I love all the activated abilities, everything that that creature has. Yeah. So this is a pretty interesting card. Um, definitely one you'd want to like build around. And you'd want to build around it putting counters on your own creatures. Yes. You could do like an experiment crotch kind of thing with Volrath, I yeah. would think. Yeah. Because <clears throat> then he can just like whatever you need more abilities of, you can just make him those. Um, and then it's also like you are slowly putting minus one, minus one counters on creatures. And it's the beginning of combat, so the turn you play this, right, you're going to you get, get the value. You, yeah, which is really nice. And the Wizards has been doing that a lot more over the past few years as opposed to doing, like, upkeep triggers. They do end step triggers or this kind of a thing where yeah. you're getting the value on the same turn. Which, which is, is nice. Yeah. Yeah, so I really like this card a lot. Yeah, so it's just, like, not only are you getting... Uh, you can turn them into, like, your own creatures because you should be playing the creatures that give counters. Mm-hmm. Um, you can put a minus one counter on something that's really powerful on your opponent's side, and then you can just become that creature. Yeah. Super sweet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, super cool. And I like that it was Shape Stealer, not Shape yeah. Shifter. Yo, what if you, like, make him a copy of Lazav, and then use Lazav's ability to make him something from your graveyard? The, like, old Lazav? No, the new Lazav. The new Lazav? Right. Um then I guess he would have that ability. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a really cool... And, you know, like, I think... Um, and I, sh- I should have put this together earlier, but I think that out of the, out of the cards in this set so far, this is going to get my flavor win um, designation. All right. Because he's a shape stealer. And they didn't. Sh- they didn't say shape shifter. He's a shape stealer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a flavor win. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're gonna move on to the rest of the new cards. No more lieutenant commanders for this episode. Sorry, guys. Hold on. <laughs> uh, so we got uh, Kad- Kadina. Kadena. Kad- yeah, Kadena. Kadina. Uh, K- Kadina silencer. Uh, one of anything in a blue for a Naga wizard. Uh, it's a 2-1. Uh, when Kadena's silencer is turned face up, counter all abilities your opponents control. Ooh. Nice. And so it's got the Megamorph for one of anything in a blue. Um, yeah, Megamorph is just like regular morph. But, but it gets a 1-1 one, one counter. Well, yeah, when it's turned face up. Yeah. Yeah, this card is just rough. You, like, <laughs> you flip this at the right time, and if people are having like an activated abilities um, off then you can just stop all that right there. Just like, see ya. Yeah, this is a super cool card. Um, bit of a sidebar here. Are, are Nagas just snake people? Yeah. Okay, good. Just wanted well, to... Uh, yeah, because they have like the snake body, but then they still have like arms and stuff, and they have like a face and everything. Right, so. like snake folk. Sure. Kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. For yeah. you D&D players. <laughs> all right, the next card is Sudden Substitution. It's two and two blue for an instant, and it has split second. Exchange control of target non-creature spell and target creature. Then the spell's controller may choose new t- targets for it. Yeah, this card, I think the flavor text says this best. Bow before the might of, wait, what? <laughs> so yeah, this is a little bit, this is a little bit confusing, but. I love this card. It's, you know, it's, it's, so it's super good. cool. It's so yeah. cool. The art on it's great. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, so basically, um, you're going to have a creature and your opponent's going to play something that's, like, game-ending. And then you play this, give them your creature, and you get that game-ending spell. And right. you win. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is very cool. And it has the uh, the classic line across the the art. That's, you know, like that split-second line. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I love that. Cool. And uh, interesting that they put this in the deck with Morph. 
Right? Yeah, I don't know why. Like, why this would you put this in, in a different deck? In Jeskai. So that the morph deck could deal with like could deal with this split second spell. Now no one can deal with this spell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, well, yeah, it's fine. This card is going into all my uh all my decks really. All your blue decks? Yeah. All the decks I, that can I, run it? Pretty much only yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I have a lot of blue decks. Yeah. Too. I actually, ha- I think I have like three or four mono blue decks. Whoa, yeah. that's a lot. I know, I have a problem. I don't have very many decks, but it's like, uh, I noticed a while ago, it's like, hey, I only have like one deck that doesn't have blue in it. Yeah, it's a good color. Yeah. But yeah, that card, um, yeah. Whenever someone likes to take Sanguinate or something, you're like, oh, I'll do yeah. that instead. Yeah. We have a lot of that going on. Yeah, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I think Trevor is just as bad for Exsanguinate and Torment of Hailfire as, right. as I am. Um, okay, the next card is Thought Sponge. It's three and a blue for a 1-1 one, one sponge. It has flash. <laughs> thought, thought Sponge enters the battlefield with a number of 1-1 one, one counters on it, equal to the greatest number of cards an opponent has drawn this turn. When Thought Sponge dies, draw cards equal to its power. So I'm not a fan of cards that are sort of like draw spells, but there's a lot of stipulations beyond just drawing cards. It's like if I want – like there are lots of instant speed draw spells in blue where you just get the cards right now. And we're good to go. So this, you know, if you wanted to do that, you'd have to do this – well, one way is have a sacrifice outlet, Mm. right? Another way is you cast this during combat and you block with it so you get to draw the cards. After it dies. But it but just... it's also during that turn, someone else has also needed to have drawn, like, a bunch of cards. Yeah, there's a lot of hoops to jump through. There's so many. So I don't I don't love this card. Um, I do love the artwork. It kind of reminds me of a Metroid. But beyond that, I just... I'd rather just have, like, a nice Blue Sun... Th- yeah, I'd usually just... <laughs> I'd rather have, like, a Blue Sun Zenith or a, a Stroke of Genius, you know, as opposed to... Or, like, a Sphinx's Revelation. Yep. Straight so, up, I'd much rather have any you know, of those than this. It's just like, you know, and I'm not a huge advocate for X draw spells because I think they can be very, like, it, you need to have a lot of X mana to make them really worth it. But still, with this card, it is four mana. You could just run, um, like, Divination, draw two cards, or the blue Harmonize, even though I know Harmonize is a, a green version of, is it Ingenuity? I think so, or something like that. Yeah, yeah. where like you, you four mana draw three cards. Draw three cards. Like yeah. I'd rather just have that. Yeah, even than though this. yeah, even though that's a sorcery, it's just yeah. I'm not because then the other thing is that if this somehow gets exiled, yeah, you get to draw the cards. Yeah, it's like so. ha sucker. Yeah, but yeah. maybe maybe they're gonna do more sponge. Maybe creatures. <laughs> was, I totally forgot this was called like its creature type was a sponge too. Like you know it could be like a thought sponge, but then it's creature jellyfish. Like you know, it could have been a creature thought. Just T-O, uh, T-H-O-T. <laughs> hey, um, but after you saying that, I need a, uh, an altar. Rough. No, I need an altar of this card with an actual Metroid on it. Oh, yeah, that would be cool. Yeah. You could probably find a better card that has, that like, Metroid-like just, art. Probably, yeah. Just any kind of, like, membrane. Probably. Yeah. All right. But maybe some, like, cool Eldrazi that looks like a, like a scion. Yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. Cool. All right, the next card is Gift of Doom. It's four and a black for an enchantment. Well, it's an aura. Enchant creature. Enchant creature has death touch and indestructible. It has morph, sacrifice another creature. As Gift of Doom is turned face up, you may attach it to a creature. Um, yeah, okay, this is not great. I think this card's really good, actually. You do? You think it's good? Yeah. Because, um, like, so... <clears throat> it's giving you a like in a deck that you want to like kill something um it's giving you that way to like kill that one creature yeah that's true but it's also like if something like is gonna happen um because when you morph this and it just happens split seconds so if somebody's casting a board wipe or something like that you can protect your commander um because mm-hmm. you morph this face up that gets indestructible um or if there's like a combat trick you want to do someone's attacking you you can give one of your small creatures indestructible and death touch kills their big creature your creature's still alive. Yeah, it is a, and it is kind of a quasi-free sack outlet as yeah. well. Yeah, that's true. It yeah. is, I guess, like, the mana cost kind of, I don't love it, but you're casting it for three. You're and casting it for three. And if you have Kadena on the field, you're casting it for free. Yes. So then you can just use it as a sacrifice outlet to flip it. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So that's really what the... I would never cast this for five mana because you want that split-second ability to be able to just... 
attach it to something if something bad happens. Right. Yeah. Yeah. True enough. That morph trickery. It is. Yeah, they should have called this deck um, trickery. <laughs> <laughs> should have been faceless trickery. Uh, menace trickery. Menace trickery. Trickery menace. Trickery menace. <laughs> All right, the next card is Thieving Amalgam. It's five and two black for a six, seven, ape snake. At the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, you manifest the top card of that player's library. So manifest, just as a reminder, is put it onto the battlefield face down as a 2-2 creature. Turn it face up at any time for its mana cost if it's a creature card. Whenever a creature you control but don't own dies, its owner loses two life and you gain two life. So you're not getting any value with this from Kadena because you're only drawing cards off of face down creatures that enter the battlefield under your control. These are so these will still be under your control, but you don't own them. Oh yeah, you manifest. Because you are manifesting yeah, their top you're right. card. Yeah, yeah. So you get it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's pretty good. And so this this kind of harkens back to Atali. Um, because that right. dinosaur like you could cast the top card of players you could play the top card. I don't know if you could hit lands or if it was just you could cast. I can't remember. I think the, it's cast. I'm yeah. pretty sure it's cast. Um and that one is for free. This one you will have to pay for the cost still. But now you're you're getting morph creatures onto the battlefield. Uh, for your commander and everything like that, so mm-hmm. I think this is a pretty good value. Yeah, and there are cards that let you turn cards face up yes. with a, using an alternate cost. Yeah, so if you're like in a blink deck, like yeah, that that works too. But if you blinked, uh, if you blinked a creature you didn't own, wouldn't it come back no. and play under its owner's control? Yeah, you're right. Mm-hmm. So that's that not, doesn't work. No, no. But yeah, there definitely are cards from like the onslaught block, which was a. Uh, Try, which was like a an a morph centric set. I think there's there are cards like that that are probably already spiked in value. Okay, the next card is Apex Altasaur. It's seven and two green for a 10-10 dinosaur. When Apex Altasaur enters the battlefield, it fights up to one target creature you don't control. And it has enrage. Whenever Apex Altasaur is dealt damage, it fights up to one target creature you don't control. So I really like this card as like a, a selective green board wipe. Yeah. Because you're going you're gonna to have it enter the battlefield. It's going to fight a target creature you don't control. Enrage is going to trigger. You're going to get to tar- target another creature. And until Altasaur has been dealt 10 damage, you can pick off a few small creatures. Maybe even those creatures are combo pieces. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, I, I I I really like this card a lot. I think it's really cool. Yeah, I was thinking of even like throwing in my Yisan deck because nice. like usually when you get to eight, you know, that's when you probably should win the game. But even even doing this at, you know, having a nine slot isn't always a bad idea. And even just hard casting this. This is just a great yeah, this is a really great it's a really great way to use fight and still make it um a, a, a one sided green board wipe. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, and like, yes, at eight mana, like at green, we do have things like, um, crater hoof and stuff, but it's like, sometimes you don't draw that card, you know, or something like that. So like, why not put this in your deck? I think this is really good just to like chip away people's things. Mm -hmm. And it is also the enraged trigger is fights up, up to one. So you don't have to keep fighting until Altasaur dies. Right. You can still keep it alive. Yeah. And if you, and if you're really, you know. If you really need a green board wipe, just play uh, Nevin Yearl's Disc. Sure, yeah. That's what I do. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Ooh, this one's cool. Yeah, this is a really neat one. Uh, So Road of Return is just two green for a sorcery. Uh, Choose one, return target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand, uh, or put your commander into your hand from the command zone, and then it also has Entwine for two. Yeah, so if you pay... The two extra, you can do both. Yeah, so four mana total. You get a card from your uh, graveyard to your hand. It is a permanent card. Um, And then you can put your commander from your uh, command zone into your hand. Yeah, this is a real... I really like that with this commander set, they're giving us more ways to cheat the commander tax. Yeah. Because that can get a little bit pricey. It can, yeah. So it's like (laughs) if your commander is costing like, you know, six or even eight extra, um, you can just, for an extra two mana... 
And then if it's in your hand and you haven't gotten a chance to cast it and somebody uses a wheel effect or something like that, you can always put him back in the command zone. Exactly. Hit, you know, him or her back in the command zone. Or yeah, eight. yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is just a cool card. It's nice to see in Twine back. Yeah, totally. Oh, I like this a lot. I like this card a lot. Yeah. Ooh, okay. So here's a another new card. It's Grismold the Dread Sower. It's one black and a green for a 3-3 three, three troll shaman. He's legendary. He has Trample. At the beginning of your end step, each player creates a 1-1 one, one green plant creature token. Whenever a creature token dies, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Grismold the Dread Sower. Interesting. What I always think, the first thing I think with this card, again, uh, is like Voltron. Oh, really? Yeah, because you can just, if you have a way to like board wipe and make him indestructible, you can just keep making him like bigger and bigger and bigger. But what, what were you thinking with this guy? Uh, there is also like enchantments out there that just say like creature tokens get like minus one, minus one. Yeah, that's true. Right? So mm-hmm. then like every single turn, um, uh, every single of your end steps, those creatures are going to enter and die and make him three bigger mm-hmm. every turn. So yeah. it's kind of interesting. Yeah, it's kind of slow. I don't I don't, I don't, don't uh, think I'll be building around this guy. But I do okay. like the art. It's pretty cool. The art's really cool. Yeah. yeah. But it's like it could be an interesting thing. You know, you got like a troll shaman commander. You're going to do troll sh- uh, tribal? Sure. Because he doesn't have any, he doesn't care about trolls. No. <laughs> but it's like if you're doing saplings and stuff, like if you had a way to like make a ton of tokens in general, um, you could make this guy huge. Um, yeah, that's true. Yeah, and he does he does care about tokens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like whenever, and it's eight creature tokens, so even if you own it, he gets the plus one. So again, if you have like that enchantment out that's giving everything minus one, minus one, and you just have ways of like making uh, tokens, um, this guy can probably get pretty big out of nowhere, and then you just swing in for trample. Because he has trample as well, so that's true. Yeah. So green, black, Voltron. I stand corrected <laughs> <laughs> about it being bad, not about the Voltron thing. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, the next card is Pendant of Prosperity. It's um, an artifact for three mana. Pendant of Prosperity enters the battlefield under the control of an opponent of your choice. Pay two, tap, draw a card, then you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. Pendant of Prosperity's owner draws a card, then that player may put a land card from their hand onto the battlefield. I love cards like this. This Where is you just a cool like get to give card. it to somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is like heavy on the um, This is like single hug. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh you you pick somebody and obviously you two are gonna be getting more benefit. You want to make sure it's somebody who's going to be wanting to also be tapping it to get mm-hmm. the value out yeah, of it. Yeah, somebody who's behind, somebody who you haven't given your Zancha commander to. Sure, yeah. You know, yeah, this is a this is a this is just a fun card. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like this card a lot. Mm-hmm. Um I think it's great for um all the shenanigans you can pull. Um and then it's just like you of course as the player get the most value out of it because you don't have to pay. Yeah, exactly. The, yeah. <laughs> the card draw and, and and you're still giving that player like, "Hey, and then you draw cards. Yeah, that's and that's a really good rate, right? Like draw a card, then you may put a line. If you draw a land card, you yeah. put it into play. It's, you know, so for it's two good. mana, that's really good. Mm-hmm. So you and this other person are just going to pull ahead a little bit from the rest of the table. Yeah, I do think it's a good, a good political card. Yeah. I like it a lot. Yeah, good card. <sighs> Scroll of Fate is three of anything for an artifact. Uh, you can tap it to manifest a card from your hand. That's that, cool. That can be good because if you have Kadena out, you're tapping to manifest a card from your hand and drawing a card. Yeah. Right? So this is, that's pretty good turn over turn. Especially if they're creatures, morph creatures, you can flip them up. You don't have to pay their mana cost. But if they are morph creatures, sometimes their mana cost is cheaper than their morph cost. Mm-hmm. So you might want so to sometimes. do the manifest thing. And morph is concerned with when it gets turned face up. It isn't concerned with how that happens. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so it is like if you have a way of turning a face up. Of course, if you like blink it, that's not going to count as the morph anymore. Right. It's not going to be turned face up. Because yeah. it just comes back in face up. Mm-hmm. Um, but this can be really strong. Now we're getting to blink strategies. Because now whatever we have in our hand, we can manifest on the battlefield and then blink that and get it out. So yeah. if we have really big stuff, we can just easily cheat that stuff out. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Omniscience. Mm-hmm. Got an omniscience in your hand. Scroll of fate. It's like turn five. Boom. Boom. Omniscience. Turn, turn, turn three. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you waiting till turn five? <laughs> I'm just giving like a reasonable amount. But it's like, yeah, the soonest you could do this would be turn three. 
Turn two with Sol Ring? Yeah. <laughs> you do need a way to, like, blink it, too, though. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. I didn't think about that. With, uh, but, I mean, if we're, like, even just, like, staying in general, like, a Brago deck with this card. Oh, yeah. Is, like, this card fits right into that deck, I feel. For that's sure. so good. <clears throat> yeah, I like it. Good card. <clears throat> All right, Leadership Vacuum. We already talked about that. This card is cool. Okay, the next card is Mire in Misery. This is, I think, also in the Rakdos deck. It's one in a black. Yeah, I couldn't find a good image of this on uh, Scryfall. That's cool. That's why it's... Uh, it's a sorcery. Each opponent sacrifices a creature or enchantment. So this is sort of like Enchanter's Bane from last year's Commander set, where it was like a red way to deal with enchantments, but it wasn't reliable. Mm. This, I think, is a little bit better because if they only have one enchantment, like, you know, they can sacrifice a creature. Right? It's not perfect. Yeah. I like that they're trying to give red and black ways to deal with enchantments without making it st- making it too easy yeah for sure <laughs> that's really cool um yeah this is a decent unit effect because it does hit all opponents too mm-hmm. um you don't just have to choose one of them so i think that's really good yeah yeah i like it this card stinks <laughs> uh this is voice of many two of anything and two green uh when voice of many enters the battlefield draw a card for each opponent who controls fewer creatures than you so best case scenario, you're drawing three cards. For four mana. Just play That's Harmonize. <laughs> but this is a 3-3. Three, three. I just play Harmonize. <laughs> it's better you're always going to draw three cards. Because you're, draw- you're not playing this guy for any other reason than that you're drawing cards yeah. from it, right? There's no, there's no elf synergies in this deck. There's no <laughs> druid synergies. <laughs> so it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. So just play Harmonize. Take this card out and put Harmonize in if you want to draw three cards because you're not always going to draw three cards from this. I think like you, your deck really needs to go wide to make sure you're getting those draw three cards. So in an elf deck, great. Sure, yeah. Great card. Maybe maybe not great card, but fine. Put it in there. But even the morph deck where we're like being able to play creatures for free all the time. Sure, yeah. Yeah, it's... It's okay. It's not... It's, it's pretty... Pretty close to if that. it costs like three, then I would be like, "Hey, it's may- a three, maybe three for it's four. <laughs> maybe it's not as good as Harmonize." <laughs> but uh, you get a yeah. creature on the battlefield, and then if we have Panharmonicon, we're getting double that value. Yeah, I Yarok. Guess, uh, you know, you're right. You're right. <laughs> There's some value there. <laughs> this is probably gonna be like a ten dollar card, so you better buy him now. Oh god. <laughs> All right, Scaretilla, that's in every deck. Okay, we're going to move on to the uh, value reprints mm-hmm. in this deck. So probably the most valuable reprint in any of these decks is Seedborn Muse. It's three and two green for a 2-4 spirit. Untap all permanents you control during each other player's untap step. So morph costs are really expensive to activate, so you want to have mana open when it's not your turn. So th- I think that's why this is in here. Sure. Yeah, I don't I mean because yeah, there's no, no like yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I know yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, this card's really good in this deck. Um, it was it's really generous of them to print this that in there. So yeah, I was getting up there. I was getting to like the twenty twenty five dollar mark, even though it had been reprinted in uh, Battle Bond. But it's like this also synergizes so well with the deck. Like yeah, you pick this up. You probably keep this card in there. Yeah, don't take this out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Seedborn Muse is so good. So good. I'm surprised it's not ne- like. No, I'm not gonna say it. All right, next card. (laughs) (laughs) Tempt with Discovery. So it's three of anything and a green for a sorcery. Uh, I really like this card. It has Tempting Offer. Yeah. (laughs) So (laughs) can you tempt people? Uh, Search your library for a land card, any land, and put it onto the battlefield. Each opponent may search his or her library for a land card, put it onto the battlefield. For each opponent who searches a library this way, um, search your library for a land card and put it on the battlefield, and then they have to shuffle their library. So it's like you get one one land no matter what. Um, if anyone else searches for land, you get another land on top of that. Never search for a land oh, if but someone it's so plays good. this card. <laughs> Never. Do, if, and if you're going to search for a land, search for the land like Strip Mine, Ghost Quarter, Wasteland. Something to destroy their land. Yes, that yeah. they search for. Yeah. Because uh, if everybody searches for a land like that, then the player that cast Tempt with Discovery only gets to keep one land and probably the worst one that they searched for. But that being said, you know, I know none of you are ever going to search for a land with this. So four mana to get any land is 
pretty good. It's still good. Yeah. Yeah. It's still a very, very powerful effect. Um, back when we first started playing Commander at our friend's place, I had this in my Bant Eldrazi deck. And so there were a few times before people started catching on, I'd, I'd cast this. They'd still get lands. I would get Eye of Ugin and, uh, <laughs> and Eldrazi Temple. God. And it's like... <laughs> I'm going off. How could they be so foolish? <laughs> yeah, those are fun times. If it ha- yeah, before they knew. If it ha- yeah, if a card has tempt in the in the title, just don't. Yeah, don't, pretty much. Don't be just tempted. Don't. <laughs> Next reprint is Thran Dynamo. It's four mana for an artifact. Tap, add three colorless mana to your mana pool. Just a great mana rock. Uh, it was. Pretty, it was kind of expensive until it got reprinted in Iconic Masters, but yep. it's been getting back up there again, like a six, seven dollar card. So, yeah, good reprint, real good card, solid mm-hmm. mana ramp. Oh, yeah, and again, Ash Barons that was in the uh, previous deck. Mm-hmm. So, like we said, without playing with these decks, there's the, still uh, some more cards. Oh, there's still some reprints. Yeah, yeah I found some other ones. Um, <clears throat> next up, we do have the Hooded Hydra, so it's X and two green. For a Snake Hydra. Um, Hooded Hydra enters the battlefield with X 1 1 counters on it. When Hooded Hydra dies, put a 1 1 green Snake creature token on the battlefield for each 1 1 counter on it. And then it does have Morph for 5. And as it's turned face up, put 5 1 1 counters on it. So it's a decent just card to have out there. And then if you morph it, you get 5 counters on it. Um, or then if you play it from your hand, you have to pay 2 extra if you're going for those 5 counters. Um, but it's also nice because in some board wipes or something, you still get a bunch of 1-1s. One yeah. Yeah. So I was kind of surprised, but this card is actually kind of up there. Really? Uh, yeah, it was around like the $5 mark. Hmm. So um, nice little reprint there. I um, thought we should also mention the uh, the Planeswalker in this deck is uh, Vraska the Unseen. Isn't that card like dirt cheap? It was printed in a dual deck. It's like 4 bucks. Yeah, okay. It's okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's a decent Planeswalker. Um, again, we're seeing like a little bit of removal on the Planeswalker as well, just like with Ral. Yeah. Um, so with this one, you can plus one. It starts with five loyalty for five mana. Um, you plus one, and uh, basically until end of turn, if any creature attacks Frosca, they die. Right. Um, and then for minus three, you get to destroy non-land permanent. That's good. So pretty much like for five mana, you're getting rid of a non-land permanent, and then this still sticks around if no one can deal with it, and mm-hmm. then you just get more activations out of that, so it's really good. Um, uh, it does have the minus seven Put three one one black assassin creature tokens on the battlefield with whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, that player loses the game. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. Super good. Uh, uh, the other really good one, like the price did drop a little bit from its M25 uh, printing, but uh, Strionic Resonator is in the deck. Oh, yeah. That's um, a really great card. Yeah. So it was starting to climb up a little bit up to like the three, four dollar mark. Um, but yeah, Strionic Resonator, it's an artifact for two mana. Yeah. Uh, Pay two and tap it to copy target triggered ability you control. You may choose new targets for the copy. So in a morph deck, this card's super good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and then just two more lands of note. There's a Bajuka Bog. Yeah, that's like three. That was like three. Three, four bucks. Three, four bucks, yeah. Yeah, so that enters the battlefield. You get rid of someone's graveyard. So you probably... Kind of hard to believe that that card is that valuable. Right? Yeah. yeah. I just... bought a collection. And I have like four or five of them. So I'm like, hmm, sure. Yeah. 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 Well, I remember buying them when they were like twenty five cents. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hasn't been reprinted, and it's good graveyard hate. So yeah, I know it's awesome. Yeah. No, but I mean, I think there was one in the C eighteen the Wind Race deck, but otherwise it hasn't been reprinted since Zendikar. Okay. I think they I do know. put yeah. it in like Commander products, but yeah. that's it. Yeah, yeah totally. <clears throat> and then uh, this deck also comes with a Reliquary Tower, so no max hand size. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, that card keeps getting up there. Yeah, and it was just reprinted in. Well, just. Com- it C19? Uh, it's core 19. Yeah, yeah, Core 19. So it's not, that's not M19, just I like last, last summer. Yeah. You can say Core 19 because they call them Core sets now. I said C19, though. That's Commander. You did, yeah. yeah. Don't, don't confuse the listeners. M- M19, sorry. <laughs> it's Core 19. <laughs> 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 well, I get, as I was saying, without, without getting a chance to have played the decks yet, we can't really give them a reasonable review of of what they're like out of the box so you guys are gonna have to wait for our thoughts on that but those are those are our thoughts on these two commander 2019 decks and uh, we'll be back next week to cover the other two decks that is the naya and the rakdos 
And I don't I don't think by then we'll have been able to play with the decks, but So which of these two decks do you like more? If which, you had to choose which one. Which of these two decks? Ah, uh, you know, I don't I always like having green in my deck. Yeah. I really I'm really a sucker for that land based ramp. Sure. But I don't know that there's enough morph potential without having like Animar as the commander. Really? To really get there. So Because you're getting free creatures off this guy though. Yeah. And you're drawing cards for morph creatures coming in. Yeah. That's and, in a way better than Animar. And but that 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 is in a way better than Animar, but I think I would pick I if I had to pick between these two, I'd pick the Jeskai deck, but I I'd use Elsha as the commander as sure. opposed to Savine. Because as yeah. you know, my what I said about graveyard strategies being weak to removal. Sure. <clears throat> um yeah, I was. Uh, I'm. Uh, I'm more positioned towards the Jeskai deck just because like, I think it's fun to flashback spells. Oh, but yeah. I feel the Saltai deck has the better value in it, not mm-hmm. in terms of like dollar value, right? But I think just being able to play creatures for free and draw more cards off of that, yeah, you're going to be churning through the deck. I think pretty well in yeah. this deck, and so. that's going to be f- that's going to be a lot of fun because like dr- what's more fun than drawing cards? Exactly. Right. So mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, but we will we will see who who gets to choose. Which deck? In our Chaos Draft. In our Chaos Draft. Which I'm pretty excited for. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Um, All right. Well, if you'd like to get in touch with us, if you have any questions or if you have any corrections, you can find us at turn one soul ring the podcast at gmail.com, on Instagram at turn one soul ring the podcast, and you can follow me on Instagram at command beacon. Uh, Eric does not use social media, so you can't find him anywhere. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're currently doing our august giveaway for the cards we talked about in our budget cards episodes that's happening on our instagram page and you can enter that giveaway by finding the august giveaway instagram post follow the instructions on that post and you'll be entered for a chance to win those packs we'll be announcing the winner of that giveaway on september 1st and uh, then we'll be starting our september giveaway which might have something to do with Throne of Eldraine, maybe, because that, that'll be the set of that. That'll be the fall set. Yeah. And you can also find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and SoundCloud if you want to listen to the show. And that is, that's all we have for you folks. So go get them, tigers. Turn one, soul ring.